Boom, yo, what up? It's FT Sports. It's your boy TJ the Artist, and we got a new guest today. Tell me your name, man. What's going on, y'all? Uh, I go by Shaka. Um, I'm a tattoo artist, and I'm here with my boy TJ. Yeah, man. Uh, go ahead, you know, since you're new on the show, go ahead and tell them your favorite teams basketball, college football, football, whatever. What's your favorites, man? Right, right. So, basketball, NBA is definitely the Lakers. Um, I've been a Lakers fan since I was probably six years old. Okay. So I can remember as far back as to, you know, the Kobe and the Shaq days for sure. When they okay. pretty much dominated the league. Um, and then, of course, you know, the hat says it is stuff. Gators fan. Yeah. Um, Gators in <laughs> here. Yes, sir. Gators, that's, that's, that's pretty much a family tradition right there. They don't really uh, care about basketball for real. But football, oh, it's... It's tradition over here. Like we, <laughs> we bleed orange and blue over here for sure. Okay, um, okay. And then um, I definitely like boxing. Uh, my dad was a huge boxing fan. Um, so that's how I caught on board with boxing for sure. Um, okay. Some of my favorites is, of course, Ali. Um, okay. Definitely like um, Bernard Hopkins. Um, and then, you know, I got some current favorites today. Uh, Jamal Crawford. Definitely one okay. of my favorites. Tanner uh, Crawford. Um, <laughs> Just Jamal Crawford. Crawford. Think, think of basketball again. <laughs> think of basketball. Right. Um, but yeah. He so, got a fight coming up, don't he? Tanish Crawford. Uh I think he do. I think he do. Man, I was yeah. hoping they could do it with uh Canelo, but you know, man, bro, boxing. It, boxing boxing got too many politics in it, man. It's it too really many, deep. it's too many promotions, it's too many people grabbing for the money that some of these fights that we're used to seeing where the top guy fight the top guy is gone because of promotions. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? If everybody, you see like basketball, we can see the best two teams go at each other because everybody under NBA or, or mm -hmm. NFL, best two teams. But could you picture if every NBA team had a different promote, uh, like a promotion, bro? <laughs> They'll never play up against each other because everybody think they the A side. We this, we that. We're not going to fight this unless we get this type of money. Like, it's it's a lot. So, I can see why the Canelo and Terrence Crawford fight wouldn't work. Is Everybody just grabbing for it, you know what I'm saying? But I would like to see it. I would definitely like to see it. You know, um, Terrence Crawford coming off of that that crazy master class versus Errol Spence. And then, mm -hmm. you know, Canelo been on top for a minute. So, it's like, there go the money right there. Literally. The money, because yeah. it's just like when it comes to boxing these days, of course, it's it's all about at this point, mainly the money and who draws the biggest crowd. I feel like Terrence Crawford and Canelo would have been probably oh, yeah. the next fight of the century at that point. Yeah. Like, yeah, it would have well, been crazy. Since we since we talking boxing just this weekend, Shakur Stevenson uh, did his boxing thing versus I forgot dude name. <laughs> I definitely forgot buddy name. I forgot buddy name, but Shakur pulled it off in the end. Um, I watched it. This was actually my first fight watching Shakur from beginning to end. Usually I watch highlights and I see his movement and everything. And I'm I must say it felt like he was missing the aggressiveness. You know what I'm saying? It felt like he played it too safe. When he had, when it felt like he had him, he let him off the hook. A lot of his defense, too, is moving back. Like, he just moved back. So, he's been calling out Tank, but Tank going to walk you down. So, I don't know what, like, game plan you got, you know, that he might have for him if they were to box, box it out. But for you to be backing up, Tank to be moving forward, you're going to get trapped in that corner. You're going to get put on them ropes. Unless you got a uh, a strategy for that, you're going to go to sleep just like everybody else done went to sleep. So uh, how you feel about Shakur Stevenson, man? I mean, honestly, like, well, for one, I applaud you for watching a whole fight of his. Because, <laughs> <laughs> man, listen, that's, oh, my gosh. I've watched him a few times. like, And I, mm -hmm. specific, I specifically remember his last fight before this one. And I actually, that was probably the longest one I had watched. And it's just like, like I, I get it, I get him on the defensive side of things, but it's like his yeah. his punches, in my opinion, um, aren't really like. It's, it's, to me, boxing is really isn't all about flash. I get the flash part, and people want to yeah. see you know a, a knockout show. 
Yeah. But like even with his offense, like it's not enough for me. It's just not yeah, enough. Yeah, I I do I do feel like it's not enough. Um and I'm I'm with you on the knockout part. Everybody can't get knockouts, but mm-hmm. for the people that are punchers, you can still see, like for instance, Ty- Tyson Fury, he's not a knockout artist. But when he's standing in the paint and he started clipping you with them combos, it's like, oh my gosh. You know what I'm saying? Everybody not going to be a knockout artist. We get it. But Shakira, I'm telling you, like, he needs to, like, throw some more. Maybe that's what he need to do. Yes. Instead of three punch, four punch combo, double it. Because mm-hmm. them boys can't fuck with him. I'm going to be real. Them, the, whoever he fought last time, he couldn't fuck with him. It's just on him to up the pressure on that dude. Not be scared mm-hmm. to get clipped. You know what I'm saying? I think that might have been something, too, that might have been going on in his head, like, Okay, I can go up here and punch, and if he just get a lucky shot on me, I can go to sleep, which I understand because it's boxing. But still, like, this is on ESPN. Mm-hmm. It's a, this ain't pay per view where it's hidden. Like, ain't nobody see this. This is you could literally pick up the t- you know the remote and you mm-hmm. can watch it. So everybody saw that. Everybody saw them people walking out. Yes, fight. Literally, bro. That, that, you, he, that probably would have been me. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, he's good. But it's just like I don't, and I don't like I said I don't even care about the knockout. But up in the the pace, maybe mm-hmm. that's what it is. Maybe that you know because you can't be calling out tank and then you putting stuff like that together. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? You, and, and that's probably you, what it is. Yeah. When I think about it, because it's just like Shakur is one of those guys where his boxing style is it, like is of like you just waiting for that big moment in a story. It's like he's telling yeah. a story and it's like, it's just prolonged and prolonged and prolonged. Yeah. And it's like, when the end come, you're like, you just, we, we, we just sitting there waiting for the beat to drop. Right. And it's just like, that's the end. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I think that's what it is, but it is actually a, like a, that's an exciting, like weight class too. Like, yes, you got definitely. tank, you got, I mean, doubt when tank went against Frank, that was my first time watching Frank, and I'm not gonna lie, that boy got some combos on Tank. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. He put. He puts. Hey, he put the hands on that boy. He definitely he did. Him, but so I'm. Hey, Frank, you got a fan in me after seeing. Even though you lost, you got knocked out. Whatever, cool. But I can see him really going off on somebody else, though. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. Uh, so Tank, Frank, Devin Haney, um. We ain't gonna talk about the Ryan Garcia situation. That was that's insane. He was wilding. He needed yeah. he being reprimanded. So they all I felt like I felt like I've been rooting for Donald Trump damn near. That's how I feel like. But I didn't know yeah. he was Trump though. I didn't know he was Trump. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like you rooting for a guy and then you hear all that stuff that he was doing, and you're like, what? Yeah. I'm up here trying to defend him. I'm like, bro, he ain't even used no no steroids in that fight, bro. You can't use steroids to tell somebody that the left hook coming. He was killing right. Devin Haney left hook all, the, and then you put that extra stuff in there, and I feel I feel stupid. Yeah, it it it, it definitely blew my mind. I that was by far the not even like the last of last that I I would have expected to have hear from him. Yeah, um, yeah, that just I I was speechless when I saw that. I'm just like I don't even know what to say. Right, I'm I'm serious too, bro. <laughs> but yeah, that's an exciting weight class right there. But um, uh, how do you feel about Deontay Wilder? Um, well, you gonna make me act like Stephen? <laughs> hey, how you feel about him, bro? Man, at, at first I thought like he was really um just his just his aesthetic and his aura in in the in the industry of boxing. I thought it was really really great for a while. And um, I mean, he was a true showman. And then it's like over time, he started dwindling in just his overall self as a boxer, mm-hmm. in my opinion. You know, just from the way he fight to the way he walks to the ring to to him outside of the ring. Um, I just felt like he's just been dwindling. Mm-hmm. And that that last fight that he had, I think you actually uh dropped it in the group chat where mm-hmm. he uh he he lost that one. And I'm just like this man is done. Yeah. Like, like, like he's done. And it's just like, I don't know. I, to, to me personally, from a mental aspect, Fury got to him. You think Fury did it? Man, I think mentally Fury flipped his brain upside down. And like, he just ain't been the same since. Yeah. He I, just ain't been the same since. 
Yeah, I think. All right, so watching those Fury fights, the first one, he, you know, Fury in the first one wasn't pushing forward. He was, he was, yeah. like, Fury was on his back foot, and of course, that's what that's what Deontay Wilder like. You on your back foot? I'm coming to get you. And I mean, rightly so, rightfully so, because of that power that Deontay has. You don't want to get hit by that. And he he did get hit by it, but he got up some kind of way. Yeah. Even Deontay Wilder was like, bro, I saw his his eyes roll in the back of his head. I don't get it. The boy <laughs> got up. Um, then the second fight was a wash. I wish that, that the second fight could just go off into the distance and disappear because that was like Deontay Wilder was not ready for that fight. I, I know he said something about the suit being heavy, all this other Man. stuff, but it was it was a bad fight. And you know, Deontay usually fights at like 220, maybe, and he was a little bit heavier in the second fight. And I don't think he really carried that, you know what I'm saying, well. Um, the third fight was better because they was knocking each other out. It was crazy. He did his thing. So I don't think he that fight did it to him. I actually think the fight where he started talking about that guy that um, passed away from a boxing match. Mm -hmm. I think that's where he softened up because it, the fight that he fought, buddy, and like he he knocked him out like in the first two rounds or something like that because, you know, he fought somebody after Tyson Fury, he knocked him out in that press conference. He was crying because of, you know, the guy that passed away in yeah. the ring. Well, I don't know if he passed away in the ring, but I think he was disabled. He was a vegetable or something. I can't I can't really remember. But it was something that happened along those lines. And in that post conference, I actually saw somebody that was like softening up because usually in his interviews and everything before that, he was saying how he wants a body on his record. He was actually saying, mm -hmm. I want to kill somebody in the ring. That's what he was saying publicly, publicly. Mm -hmm. I mean. He was saying that publicly. So that was a different fighter. Right. Once that happened, it felt like he was just he it, that fire wasn't there no more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think that was more like where, you know, he lost that that flame, that that fighter that he once was. But it also could be age and other things. Um, it also could be him changing, you know, um changing trainers and trying mm -hmm. to learn new things or whatever. And it just felt like he wasn't he wasn't the same at the Tyson Fury, but he also it just felt like I'm I was watching a totally different person, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? From then on. But he's one of my favorite fighters because I like for a person to like go into a match and he's like, one of us is going to sleep. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't care who it is. He he had that fearlessness, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go into this fight, I'm walking away from this fight, he's going to be on the ground. And I'm going to be doing this with the belt. That's the type of vibe he had. He ain't trying to win on no points. He ain't trying to win on no decision. That ain't what he do. Right hand. All I got to do is land this bitch one time. It's a wrap. <laughs> you got 10 to 12 rounds to run away from this right hand. But if it hits you, you could be perfect for, for, for 90 minutes. But that mm -hmm. 91st minute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That 91st minute that I catch your ass with this right here, mm -hmm. it's a wrap for you. But man, and if you got anything else to say about boxing, we'll move on to the next. Oh, uh, yeah, we can move on. We can move All on. right, here we go. So, we're going to create your best NBA player. You can use any NBA player in NBA history, but. Mm -hmm. You're going to use them once. So I'm going to give you different categories. It's going to be mentality, IQ, height, speed, athleticism, three-point, body type, ball handling, passability. I'm going to tell you the other two guys once we're done on what they uh, on what they had. So let's go get your NBA history, people, players, yeah. and everything yeah. pulled up to the front. And we're going to start with mentality. Who do you have? Um, Mentality would definitely be Kobe, for okay. sure. Okay, um, Kobe. Kobe was just something was wrong with Kobe <laughs> in a good way. Though. In a good way, something yeah, yeah. Kobe in a good way for sure, man. I mean, he. I, I just feel like when it comes to mentality, he like no one can possibly touch him, bro. I, yeah. I, I mean, that's just me, bro. I mean, the way the the stuff that this man played through, first of all, yeah, 
during a game. Nobody else would even do that. Like he didn't he didn't care. There were times where he didn't care about his own risk. Right at the time. Right. And and still play through. It's like, bro, nobody else is doing that, bro. Like right. nobody. Right. Understand, um, understand. Uh IQ. IQ, now nah, that's a good one. Um IQ, basketball IQ. I'm gonna be honest with you. I would probably go. Ooh, I'm now I'm stuck in between two. It was either gonna be like Chris Paul, okay, or John Stockton. All right, I need your answer right here, right now. It's gonna be Chris Paul. I'm going All right, CP three. It is. He also is now going to. I feel like he's going to elevate Victor Wembanyama next year. It's gonna be crazy. Oh, yes. Yes. That's gonna be insane. Height. Height. I'll probably height. I'm not really so big on. I'll probably do like um probably magic or LeBron as far as height. And your answer is I'll do magic. Magic Johnson for height. He about what six nine? Mm-hmm. Six nine at point guard is crazy. Uh speed. Ooh. Speed, I would probably go. Man, it was not seen that. It was a lot of fast motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It was a lot of low key fast motherfuckers in the NBA. Oh, um, shoot. Speed, I would probably have to do like a prime D Rose. D Rose, that's a good one. You probably should have picked him for this next one. Athleticism. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where you go with athleticism? Um, I'd probably do Westbrook. Westbrook? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He definitely is a monster, bro. Three-point shot. Three-point shot is Curry. Yeah, I think that's, okay. that's about the only one that's, like, just given, bro. Like, that's insane, bro. He... <sighs> You just know his money when he when it leave his hands, bro. Um, when he own, it's a different type of own. Like when when another shooter's own, you know, it's nice, it's, it's cute. But when he's on, it's like y'all might as well just go ahead and put y'all warmers back on, bro. Mm-hmm. So, uh, body type, body type. Uh, I would go LeBron. LeBron, it makes I'm sense, good. man. He been playing for he finna go on his twenty third season. Healthy, yes. still looking like he man. It's gonna be forty, right, man? <laughs> get out of here, man. Ball handling. Ooh, ball handling would definitely be. <laughs> That's a tough one. Oh man, man. Ball handling. <laughs> I go Kyrie. I go Kyrie. Kyrie? That's a good go one. That's a good one. Um, a lot of people chose the other two people chose Allen Iverson for that one. That uh, that was yeah. That was the other one. <laughs> passing <laughs> ability. And that's be this be the last one. Passing ability. Passing. Okay, I already picked what's the face. Um and Chris Paul. Okay. Oh, white chocolate. Ah, Jason Williams. Yeah. I'll okay, cool. All right, so we got passing ability, Jason Williams, ball handling, Kyrie, body type, Braun, three-point, Curry, athleticism, Westbrook, speed, D-Rose, height, magic, IQ, CP3, mentality, Kobe. Uh, Your cousin, Cash, Diggy, he chose mentality, Kobe, IQ, LeBron, height, Victor Wimbayama, speed, Derrick Rose, athleticism, Michael Jordan, three-point, Curry, passability, Steve Nash. Ball handling, AI, body type, Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram? Yeah, I don't know. Brandon Ingram at 7'4 is crazy. <laughs> yeah, that is. Yeah. But that's yeah. that's what he chose. That's what he chose. But I mean that you you had a good one. That was a that was a good one right there. I'm gonna have to do this for myself. I didn't even do it for myself. I just did it for y'all or whatever. But we're moving on to a new segment. It's a trivia game called Are you really a fan? You just told us that you was a Laker fan. I got 10 questions for you. Hold on. I got to set it up. And we're back with another one. Here we are. 
You got 10 questions. 10 Laker questions. We're going to find out if you are really a fan of the Lakers. If you get five or below, you don't know a fan thing. You don't know a damn thing. You don't know a fan thing. You get six, you're a casual fan. Seven, regular fan. Eight, super fan. Nine, diehard fan. And 10, you bleed the Laker gold and purple. I think that's what it is. Pur purple and gold. There you go. Purple and gold. We're going to start it off real easy and it might get a little bit harder. I, I don't think, uh, I think Diggy got five. Okay. Yeah. I so, got he, so he don't know a fan thing. He going to have to go do some studying. But number one, who is known as the Black Mamba? Kobe Bryant. Is that your final answer? That's my final answer. All right. Ding, ding, ding. You got it right. Kobe is known as the Black Mamba. Rest in peace to Kobe. Number two. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. It don't matter anyway because we're going to do it. So Kobe was drafted by the Hornets. What player was he traded for? Oh, Okay. What? Traded for to go to the Lakers, right? And they went to the right. Hornets. Okay. Who, what player was he traded for? What player was Kobe Bryant traded for on draft night? We all know he was drafted by the Hornets, but they traded it away. They traded away a whole <laughs> franchise. <laughs> literally. literally. Basically, basically, you traded away a, a franchise. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to remember that draft class too. That was one of the that was one of the greatest draft classes. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. Alan Iverson, I believe, was number one. Steve Nash was in that draft. I think Vince was in that draft. KG was in that draft too, right? Was KG in that draft? I would have to look it up. That's a question for me. Was any I got to look up that because 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 that brought me back to that magazine where there was all rookies and Kobe 96. was in there. Yes, and it was all them were the were the draft class. Yeah, that Frank. draft class is definitely le legendary. Oh oh oh, oh it's coming to me. Okay, hold on, hold on. Um, who was Frank. Kobe traded for? And it's actually crazy because that person. See, nah, I can't. I ain't gonna give you a hint because I ain't give Diggy a hint for that one. Okay, let me just name all the people. I think was tr I'm pretty sure Trace McGrady is in the draft class. Freak! Oh my gosh! If you, hey, if you don't know, we could just move on, man. Yeah, we can move on. I can't remember right now. All Nobody's right, gonna come to me towards me. he Frank. was traded for Vladi Divac. Oh, I want to help. <laughs> <laughs> he, I was, the, the hint that I was about to give you is the fact that he actually ended up being one of Kobe's nemesis because of the Kings. You know, Vlad Divac was on that team. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he got traded for him. All right, number three, other than Magic Johnson, name five point guards from the, the Lakers. Lakers. So you got Derek Fisher. Boom. Um, Lakers like through and through, like they stay Laker, Laker, all Laker history just named five point guards. Okay, so you got Derek Fisher, boom. Um, um, Steve Nash was a Laker point guard, he was a Laker. Um, uh, I'm going back in time, Magic Johnson. Ah, I said other than Magic Johnson, named five. Oh, yeah, you did, 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 did. okay, got two. Right. you need three right. more. Uh, what's your boy? Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. He plays now. Um, come on. And his his face is in front of me. His face is literally in front of <laughs> He's me. He's running. <laughs> oh my gosh, he was just he was there. Like, okay, Jeremy Lin was a Laker. Oh my um, god, that is that is a crazy one right there. That's three. But it's it's somebody else is literally in my face right now. Oh my gosh, he done got good too. You need to. Oh, oh my god. Oh, what's this man's name? I'm gonna get mad. D'Angelo, uh, D'Angelo uh, Williams. There we go. What, Russell? Oh, I was. Yeah, D'Angelo <laughs> Russell. D'Angelo Russell. Right, that's Russell. four. You need one okay. more. Oh, uh, okay. Let me see. 
Need one more. What? Well, okay, Jalen Green, David Fish, DeAndre Russell. Jalen. You need one more. Other than Magic Johnson, name five point guards. I'm literally down to one more person. I'm trying just to one, just one point guard, man. All, all Laker history, they had to have a point guard every every season. Come on, man. I right, dang it. Okay. I'm gonna have to put you on the timer in a minute. Go ahead, put me on the timer. All right. I'm just gonna Ten seconds. God damn it. Okay. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Ooh. Um. Six. Oh, you ugly nigga. Five. Oh four, my gosh. I can't even think. I can't even think of three. He's an ugly nigga, but I can't even think of two. Dark skin as fuck. One. Time. You mm. cannot name me five point guards in Laker history. That's crazy. Bro, that's a lot of point guards, bro. Pat Bev was a point guard for the okay. Lakers. And it was somebody else. It's an ugly ass. Smush Parker was a was a point guard for the Lakers. Norm Nixon was a point guard for the Lakers. Byron Scott, I believe, was a point guard for the Lakers. Yeah. You, you, just, you, they had to have a point guard every year, man. Bro, it was an ugly nigga too that played with LeBron. Ugly nigga that played with LeBron at a point guard. Oh, Lonzo Ball was a point guard. He was too. Yeah, LeBron was a point guard. He went into one of those yeah. seasons as a point guard. You know. I'm I'm you're just right. You're right, you're right. Now, man. You're right. I'm, that you have gotten one out of three right now. You're you're behind Diggy. That's at all right. This point. I think you make come back. had two at least right now. All right, number four. Let's see if you can redeem yourself. How many championships does Robert Horry have in all? How many championships does Robert Horry have? Four. Four? Is that your final answer? And uh, this is of all this is of all his career. Is that your final answer? I'm gonna do three. I'm gonna do three. That is wrong. Mm. Robert Horry has seven rings. He had three with the I Lakers, know. two with the Rockets, two with the Spurs. I didn't see you said three of the Lakers. See, that's see, I think I knew that part. It's just yeah. Okay, moving on. Name all of the teams that Shaq has played for. Shaq has played for the Lakers. Yeah, he was originally drafted to the Magic. Um, he's played with D Wade in the Heat. He's played for the Celtics. He's played. He actually played for the Cavaliers too, I think. And you have one more. Let's see, Lakers, the Celtics. Did I say the Celtics already? You said Celtics. You said Celtics. Okay. Lakers, Celtics, Cavaliers, Heat, Magic. Before he went to, I think it's before he went to the Cavs. He he went I somewhere. Knew. I can. You, you're missing one more. I can give you a hint if you need one. Okay, give me the hint. The hint is this. Shaq should have more MVPs, but this person that he played for actually won two of them. Who was the guy that won back-to-back -back champion? I mean, back-to-back -back MVPs that could have been Shaq's or could have been Kobe's? And Shaq was on his team, and but not when he not when he won the MVPs. Oh, but I get what you're saying. Shaq, yeah, Shaq played with this guy. He ended up playing with this guy. Um, the Suns. Steve Nash. Any name? Yes. There you go. It was Steve Nash that that took you know took two of them things. All right, you got two out of five right now. You need to make a comeback. You need to make a comeback. It's not. It's not looking good. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's go. Number six. 
Why do they call them the Lakers? Oh my lord! And you and and Diggy got this one right. God damn it! I'm gonna have to put y'all on the show together. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah. We're gonna yeah, put, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get ten more questions. We gonna put, we gonna put both of y'all in here together. <laughs> yeah, because I want to read that. Because this, you, you're job. looking bad out here, man. Mm-hmm. Are you? You might not be a fan of the Lakers, bro. I might not, bro. Might why not. do you, Why do they call them the Lakers? You know, it's crazy, and I've only heard this story one time, and it was a long time ago. Okay, it was such a long time ago. Well, you, you oh, better break it to the front of your brain. Think, let me think, let me think. It has something to do with um, uh, <laughs> bro. I forgot that one, bro. All like, right, hey. so before they were the Los Angeles Lakers, they were the Minneapolis Lakers, and it was named after the land of 10,000 lakes. Wow. They kept the name Lakers when they moved to Los Angeles. Oh, because Minnesota got 10,000? Yeah, there you go. All right, man. Is You know what? This should be right up your lane because you said that you were a fan during the Kobe years. In the Lakers 3P, who were the three opponents that they played in that 3P? They had the Sixers. Okay. Um. They played the Kings. No, the Kings is in the West, so they can't play them in the finals. You have two more. The six was one of them. You're you're missing two. I know it went Boston. Um, they were not a part of the three P. They were part of the the back to back. This is the first three P. With him in in Shaq, he got one with Philly. Everybody remembers that one solely because AI stepped over Tyron Lue. Literally, that's why it's, it's very easy to to remember that one. But the other two, let me know when you're done let thinking. Me, let, me go, let, me think. <laughs> let me really think. Let me really really, really see. Because boy, oh man, wait till your cousin see this. <laughs> Man. Oh, you gonna have to deal with it until y'all get y'all one on one. You gonna be talking so much shit. Okay. Oh man. What the Spurs. It? No, the Spurs are in the West. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know why I keep tripping that. Uh, see, I don't think I don't. Keep, I'm, I'm so used I, to watching. I'm, I okay, know I'm, why I'm, you are thinking those names. Is because those are some legendary yeah. back and forths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got That's two fine. more teams. They have to be on the east side. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> at least know that. You gotta at least know that. Okay. All right. Um. Oh, people in the comments typing right now. Boy, he don't know nothing. That's what they type in the comments. Is it the Cavs? No. All right, that's enough guesses. <laughs> it's the Pacers, Philly, and the New Jersey Nets. Oh, see, I got the Kings and the Nets mixed up. Yeah, so that that you only got two right so far. I'm gonna just let you know that you don't know a fan thing because you can't get past that anymore. You can't get to six. This is crazy, but we're gonna keep going. Number eight. Oh man, and you know now. This, I know you probably ain't gonna know this if you don't know the rest because it gets hard. You know what? I I'll ask this one first. Who was Kobe's running mate in the second back to back? In the second back to back, yeah. Who who was his next? Who was the superstar next to him when he won that back to back? Who was his superstar in the, in the early two thousands when it was uh, versus Boston and versus the Magic? Who okay, I got his- you. Uh. Ding, ding, ding. You got it right. All right. You got that one. All right. The ninth one. If I wanted to be a Laker and chose the number 22, why couldn't I wear that number? And who was wearing that number? (laughs) 
That's too tough. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm that. I'm All right, so <clears throat> maybe got half of this right. He knew that that number is retired, but he couldn't figure out who it was retired by. It yeah. was retired by Elgin Baylor. Okay. And the last one, and I know you're probably not going to get this one. What was the Lakers called in 1946? This is before the Minneapolis Lakers. They had one, they had a team for one year. They was trash in 1946. What would their what was their name? Are you drawing any anything coming from anywhere? Do you have anything? Have you ever heard a story about it? The Detroit Gems. <laughs> Detroit Gems is crazy. 1946, they were called the Detroit Gems. You don't know a fan thing. You only got three right. Diggy got five. You got three. He got something over you now. You're right. I'll take that. I'm going to have to that. put both of y'all on so y'all can get a redemption episode because y'all did, y'all did nothing. Diggy almost had six. He almost had six, but he went back on his Robert Horry rings when he said seven at first, and then he switched to the eight. Mm. Come on, man. I thought you was a Laker fan. Well, well all right. Just, just, just give us a uh just give us a closing statement on on this show and a a, a apology <laughs> to Laker fans everywhere for what you just did. Go ahead, man. You got oh my God. Okay, so yeah, I uh, I sincerely, <laughs> with my deepest being, apologize to the entire Laker organization. Clearly, I don't know anything about <laughs> the Laker organization, and they probably don't even accept me at this point. <laughs> hey, they don't want nothing to do with me whatsoever, because yeah, all they got what two right. So you got, th- you got three right. I'm gonna give you your three. You had three right. Okay. Three right, but in the Laker world, they gonna boo you. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna boo you off the court and out the stadium. For sure. Okay, so. man. So just just be prepared for a joint episode one v one on who's the more Laker fan up out of you okay. and Diggy. Y'all both have to redeem yourselves. I will have the questions ready. Just you, just be ready. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that for sure. <laughs> for sure. Cause I can't. Uh, I, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna go crazy with him talking all this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be sure to send him the video so he can see it. But this has been another episode of FT Sports. Thanks for coming on, Cassius. It's been Same. good talking to you for some uh some boxing. We don't talk about boxing on this. You the first person to come on here with some boxing, you know, mm-hmm. boxing knowledge or anything like that. So you know, just be prepared. We're gonna have you on with Diggy one v one. It's gonna be lit. FT Sports podcast. Go ahead and sign out. Appreciate y'all for having me on, and uh, don't, 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 uh, don't get on me too much. <laughs> Peace. All right, brother.